Joe Glass was in the news this week after an award-winning journalist from The Times tweeted this. Two men openly discuss what larks it would be if the venue holding the Atphelia charity conference on domestic violence and sexual abuse and Iranian women etc. was burned down. <laughs> The conference in question is the largest feminist conference in Europe will be hosting Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe. Now for people outside of the UK and people who don't read The Guardian, let me explain that Ratcliffe is an Iranian British charity worker who was imprisoned for eight years by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard for allegedly plotting to topple the religious fundamentalist government in Tehran. Boris Johnson famously defended her in the media by saying she was simply teaching people journalism, one of the very things that she was being accused of by Iran. It was a whole thing here in the UK. Her husband went on hunger strike. Boris fluffed a £400 million arms deal for a release. It's a long story. So we have the biggest feminist conference in Europe with a guest speaker who has been held in an Iranian prison to discuss the wider context of the women's anti-hijab headscarf burning protests that are going on in Iran right now. <laughs> Protests that Iran's supreme leader blames on the US and Israel. And when you mix in the recent memory of Salman Rushdie being stabbed to near death on stage at a conference this summer, and then remember that this attack was the result of a 1989 fatwa called by Iran's supreme leader, it's a real perfect storm. So let's go back to the tweet and with all the context, you can now understand why when I scrolled down that with my own prejudices and biases, I expected to find a pro-Iranian Islamic fundamentalist or, you know, an anti-Zionist or at the very least like some kind of alt-right Nazi or whatever. What I did not expect to find was Wales' answer to Dr. Robotnik, fucking Joe Glass. I mean, where do we even begin? Who is Joe Glass? My name's Joe Glass. I am a cis gay male comic book writer and creator based in the South Wales Valleys in the UK. Cis gay male comic writer and creator Joe Glass based in the South of Wales Valleys of the UK had this to say. Ugh, just learned there's a turf conference coming to Cardiff this month. And then a little sick face. A TERF, for people who don't know, is a trans exclusionary radical feminist who thinks that trans women aren't women and are a threat to women's rights. See also JK Rowling. JK Rowling, of course, whether she likes it or not, has now become the human meme representation of that very idea. A position that sees her under constant sustained attack and abuse, death threats, rapes, all of that stuff. Ugh, just learned there's a turf conference coming to Cardiff this month. And then the next person says, what the absolute fuck? Is it in a building that would be a loss if it got burned down? Bro, I've been to Cardiff, there are no buildings of worth there. <laughs> That's what I would have said. And it would have been a joke, like a, a mildly funny joke, sure it's distasteful but uh, my joke switches the target of the joke from the lives of thousands of feminists to the city of Cardiff being a shithole. Uh, uh, people get offended when they mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target Yeah, and they're not necessarily the same thing. You can make jokes about any subject, it depends what the joke is. Yeah, there's no there's no rules. You can't joke about this. You can. You should be you able to. You just can. Yeah. Okay. You have to understand that when I first read this exchange Bro, I've been to Cardiff was literally what my brain said to me as a comedy reflex. 
I know that personally I would 100% have made a joke here in the same situation. It, not sure yet, it's not being confirmed which hotel is hosting, it was Joe's response. Which is not a joke. It doesn't even have the structure of a joke. If it is a joke, it's awful. Not just content wise, but also from a technical standpoint. Ugh. Little sick face. So there's debate on whether this exchange is a joke or not. Based on my own comedic reflexes when reading the tweets in question, I'm prepared to give him the benefit of the doubt here that he wasn't actually going to assist in an anti-feminist terrorist attack on a suspected UK intelligence operative, Nazanin Zaghari. I know that I must be a bad person because the fact that I think Joe Glass is kind of innocent here makes me enjoy this whole mess even more. The schadenfreude is off the charts with this one. You see, outside of selling comic books and be gay, do crime pins with Tim Doyle, uh, Joe Glass here was an outspoken critic of Gamergate and a quote-unquote journalist for Bleeding Call where he reveled in this very type of behaviour, finding innocent, out of context comments and poor taste jokes and twisting them through a, oh look at these anti-feminists, uh, they're out of control and they hate minorities prism to instigate Twitter pylons and get people banned from social media platforms and cause people problems at work and all that toxic cancel culture SJW behaviour stuff. And now that's all happening to him. And it's come to my attention recently that some elements of the UK comic scene don't understand what irony is. And this is actually a great example of poetic irony, which is also called poetic justice. This is a very fitting outcome, usually for a bad character. This is the trope of the punishment fitting the crime. You know, like when Laertes gets killed by his own poison-tipped fencing sword at the end of Hamlet, hoist on his own petard which also comes from Hamlet so run along and tell that to Alanis Morissette or whatever and so the pylon begins Joseph Glass the face of extremism unhinged male chauvinists are threatening women's conferences crickets from the authorities you might want to question if you really are on the right side of history even Olympic medal holder Sharon Davis MBE reports him to the police of this incredibly dumb tweet. And I want to be clear here that I think reporting this particular tweet to the police is a waste of time and taxpayers' money and for something that I believe was an innocent joke. Let me remind you that this is Joe Glass. <laughs> This tweet was never a credible threat. This guy crumples like a foreskin at the first sign of conflict. Calling the police is a step too far though. The fashion police may be, but the real police? Come on. I mean, this person tags in a whole host of high profile Labour MPs, including Jess Phillips, like she's gonna turn Joe Glass into the next Sargon of a card or something. And then news of the police investigation is reported by the national media. Police investigate apparent online threats to burn venue hosting a feminist conference in Cardiff. And now it's a fact. Before, it was just a question of is this a joke or not. And now it's being reported in the mainstream media with that nuance removed. There's no showing of the tweet or naming of any names. It's just a report that police are investigating threats against what is now the most hyped feminist convention since the Seneca Falls Convention of 1848. Despite our draconian internet speech laws here in the UK, he absolutely should not go to jail for this, obviously. And many users said that they couldn't even get him in Twitter jail, that they'd reported the threat to Twitter and were told they didn't violate Twitter's terms of service or whatever. And here's uh, Joe Glass explaining in a Bleeding Call cool article that Twitter says it's cracking down on abusive accounts but is not doing enough. Here he is explaining the very tactics that accounts engaged in targeted harassment of women use. 
as long as they do not explicitly make threats to the lives of their victims or suggest violence upon them, then these users can sneak past Twitter's rules based on hateful conduct. They can perform endless psychological and emotional harassment against their targets as long as they manage their wording to avoid these specific actions and they know that. Unfortunately, we've seen this before. Gamergate saw the same tactics used, both in circumventing Twitter's rules around the conduct and targeting and harassment of people of colour, women, trans women and other members of the LGBTQ community. And many of these users talked about above are actively modelling their own movement within the comics industry on the heinous actions of this similar group that attacked the gaming industry. A more cynical man than me might read that and think, maybe Joe Glass did know what he was doing then. Maybe he's modelling his own weaponised anti-feminist hate movement within the comics industry. Maybe he really is the terrorist of turfism. I don't know. The whole thing's dumb. You got played, bro. Remember the original tweet? It comes from a blue check mark, a Times journalist, a terrible joke twisted through an anti feminist prism, reported to the police and the government, and then shat out of the press as a credible threat to a national hero. Joan Glass may or may not be a massive twat, but this is cancel culture in action. Joe Glass has been totally outclassed by a suspected MI6 agent and then sacrificed to the mainstream media, to the mob, to sell tickets to a fucking conference. And he'll get away with it and he's very fucking lucky. And he should praise Allah that he's not a Muslim because he'd be rotting in a jail cell right now if he was. I hope that he knows that his white privilege Saved his ass.